You can't just line up blog posts and articles throughout the day to just sit down and get through. You're like, well, I can type at this speed, this many words per minute, therefore I should be able to write this many 600 word blog posts in eight hours. No, it doesn't work like that. Hi guys, welcome back to the Writer Diaries. My name is Kit and today I'm gonna to be talking about writer burnout. Before we jump in, please consider liking this video and subscribing to my channel because it massively helps the YouTube algorithm um, show these kinds of videos to people who might need them. Now let's get started. Now in November last year, I reached a stage where I had so much work to do in such a short amount of time because everybody loves a Christmas deadline that instead of actually sitting down and doing my work, I was stressing about it and searching for actual jobs. Now, for a bit of background, I am a freelance writer. So I write for many different clients. I write lots of different things. I write books, I write articles, I write blog posts, I write content, I write copywriting. I do an awful lot of things. And because I'm terrible at saying no, I'd let a lot of work come in in a very short amount of time and I had misjudged quite how much there was to do and then found myself under an avalanche of work. And now this is a very nice place for me to be, really, because I have spent many years working as a freelance writer and it's only really in the last sort of two years that I've had a really good amount of work. However, there's a difference between writer burnout and freelancer burnout. And freelance burnout, I like to define as getting emotionally and mentally sick and tired of the sort of feast or famine cycle of freelancing. So there's a constant worry that you will never get work again, even if you have loads of work because you're just never quite sure how long it's going to last. And you might have periods where you don't have enough work and so you're terrified, or you might have periods where you're, you've got too much work because you've taken on too much because you're so afraid of saying no to anything. And like freelance burnout is a complex thing, but writer burnout is something a little bit different. And in November, I had found myself in freelancer burnout, but I'd found myself in writer burnout too because of this one very obvious reason. I don't know when this happened, but we have this idea that to be working, you need to be sat down at your desk and constantly pumping out work. So you need to be doing something all the time. Now, while this might be good for, I don't know, data entry, like lots of different jobs, you're constantly doing something. There's always a task that follows that task and then there's another task that follows that task and you're never really taking any time to not do anything. When it comes to writing and anything creative, any of the creative arts whatsoever, Work doesn't and shouldn't look like that. And you'll probably know what I mean if you're in any way creative and you've spent several hours doing a creative task and then you feel very tired afterwards. Now, obviously you're not physically tired because you've probably just been sat down doing you know, nothing, you're not moving around at all, but you are mentally tired. And when you're creating something, you are creating something from scratch, you know, you might be researching to write something, but you are creating those sentences on a word by word level. You are creating them from scratch to flow in a unique way with unique information, whatever. You are creating something and that is a very difficult thing to do mentally. It takes a huge amount of effort. Now, the difficulty of this is one of the reasons why I don't work for one company. I'm not an employee as a writer because I have had experience in this before and basically this is what happens. The company expects you to come in at nine in the morning and leave at five in the evening and produce, I don't even know what they expect you to produce, just write consistently throughout the day, I'm not sure. Now, I'm not saying that this happens with every company at all. A lot of companies might know that writing takes a lot, it might look a lot different from other kinds of work but I have had experience where people just expect you to sort of produce throughout that time. And that's partially expectations I have on myself as well. But the reality is that when you are a writer, you can't just do that. So you can't just line up blog posts and articles throughout the day to just sit down and get through. You're like, well, I can type at this speed, this many words per minute, therefore I should be able to write this many 600 word blog posts in eight hours. No, it doesn't work like that. When you are creating anything, the most important thing really is to give yourself a space to think. And this is why working full time as a writer is a very challenging thing, because we are really led to believe that when you are working, you need to be physically doing something that entire time. And as a writer, 
you feel like you're wasting time almost when you're just sat or walking around, you're just doing something else, but you're just thinking about it in the background. Some of the best ideas I've ever had and some of the best concepts for blog posts, articles, even YouTube videos have come when I'm not at my desk, I'm not on my laptop, I'm not writing in any way, shape or form, I'm out in the world doing something else. And as a freelancer, I find it really beneficial to, for instance, go for a run. And running really helps me think and settle ideas and come up with new things. But obviously, if I was in a company, I can't just be like, oh, hi boss, I'm just gonna go out for a run so I can think, because they won't see me running as part of my job. However, running is part of my job, because aside from the fact that I write about running sometimes for clients, I find it much easier to go back to my desk and write fantastic things if I've had a chance to think about them first. And running allows me that space to think. And so does lots of other things, even walking to the supermarket, that gives me space to think. And I'm not walking and saying, okay, now I'm going to think about X, Y, Z article that I need to write or come up with an idea for a blog post. No, these thoughts come into my head when I give them space to. So I might be thinking about, oh, what kind of tree is that? And then suddenly something else will come into my brain that will spark off an idea for some piece of writing that I will do at a later date. Now, you can't just sit down at your desk and think, right, now I'm going to think about all these things, I'm gonna write all these things. Often it doesn't work like that. And this is what we really struggle with, I think, as a writing community, is to realize that our work doesn't look like other people's work. So what's the solution to this? Well, I find myself in writer burnout often, about every six months, because I get the freelancer burnout where I pull all this work to me and then I realise I don't actually have time to do it, so I run myself into the ground working really hard and don't really take care of myself very well. And then I get through all that work and then suddenly at the other side of that work, because I haven't been taking so much work on because I've been so busy, then the work calms down a bit and then I sort of panic a bit and then I pile on loads of other projects and sign up to do loads of other stuff. And then obviously that all builds up again and then in a few months down the line, boom, I'm in freelance burnout again. One of the reasons how I can stop this from A, becoming freelance burnout, but B, stop it from becoming writer burnout is to plan into each of those projects and clients the time it takes me to do the entire thing. So as an example, I have recently taken on a client who is fantastic and I'm really excited to write for them. However, when thinking about what I charge, often <laughs> I, and, and how I'm gonna fit them into the upcoming weeks, I think, okay, well, they want, you know, a 1000 word article on this subject. Well, I know like something about that subject. It's not like it's coming from totally nowhere. Um, so I'm like, how long will it realistically take me to write that piece? And in my head, even though I have quite a lot of experience, I'm still like, okay, well, a thousand words like that'll take me this amount of hours to write. What I haven't actually built into that time factor is all of the thinking time, all of the research time, all of the time spent talking to other people and reading other um, like example, so if I'm doing an interview with an athlete or something, then I, I'm listening to podcasts about that, like with that athlete, and I'm reading interviews with that athlete to get a bit more background on them before I actually speak to them myself. So I often fail to put in the time it takes to think and research these tasks, but really a lot of that time is thinking time and allowing myself the space to not panic that I need to get this done so I can then move on to the next project and the next client or whatever. It's, I need to allow myself the time to really get into that project and factor that into the rates I charge. Some people might come across clients who can't understand this and don't understand why it might take longer than they deem it would take to write a 1000 word article. Um, like physically type it out, but physically typing out the article is like a tiny part of that work. It's a tiny part of that work. In fact, physically writing anything is quite a small part of being a writer, which is weird when you think about it, but only because we have this real mentality that work looks like a certain type of thing. You're sat down and you're doing this activity for this many hours. When you hear someone's a writer, you're imagining them that they're writing for eight hours. But 
they're not and they can't because your brain needs to be creative when you're writing you can't just sit and hammer something out for eight hours it's not gonna it's not gonna be good and it's not gonna happen very easily there's another part of this which i think is it's kind of good for me as a freelancer because I can obviously dictate the hours I work in the day. However, I am slightly constrained by the fact that I do live in a society that kind of operates on a nine to five basis. And so my partner, for instance, has a nine to five job and my friends have nine to five jobs. So I'm kind of like forced into that um, way of working a little bit as well. However, when it comes to creativity, people are very individual. Some people are very creative first thing in the morning and that might be really early in the morning. Or some people are really creative late at night. Um, very few people probably perfectly fit into the I'm creative during the hours of nine to five. Like, that would be a weird coincidence. So the idea that we are trying to force writers and other creatives into like these working hours that were really created for a factory environment is kind of insane. But because we live in a society that seems to deem that as the most normal thing, it's, we become very indoctrinated to it. And still, I've been freelance for years and still I find myself thinking like, oh my God, it's half nine and I'm doing the laundry and I should have been at my desk half an hour ago. Why? None of my clients are asking me what time I'm at my desk because they don't care. And I mean, a lot of them are in different countries anyway, so we're all on different time zones. But we're so indoctrinated into thinking that you need to work this, not only this set amount of, like this set time, like nine to five or nine to six or whatever, but the set amount of hours, it's like, well, I haven't worked eight hours today, so I'm behind. Or, you know, however many hours is normalized to you. This is something that really creates burnout with freelancers and with writers in general. Forcing people into boxes, especially forcing creative work into these kinds of time boxes is not good. So while this has been a little bit of a rambly video, what I really wanna get across is that when you are a writer, whether you're working as a writer or you're writing as a hobby, physically typing is great. And yes, of course it will progress whatever you're writing. However, that's only one part of the actual equation. Creativity requires thinking and space and mulling and allowing your thoughts to flow freely, which is a very difficult phrase to say. There's so much more to it than actually typing. So don't get yourself down if you are struggling to write quickly or write something in a very small amount of time. Like if you think you should be able to write a 500 word blog post in an hour, sure. Like some people can definitely do that. Some people can't do that. It depends what the blog post is as well and how creative it needs to be or whether you're just basically copying research and then transposing it into your own words. You know, there's so much more that goes into writing and creativity than the physicality of typing out those words. Also, I want to say that when you're planning your work and you're charging your rates and you're talking to clients, don't forget that it's not like what they think might, like how much time they might think that this amount of words should take you they're probably not factoring in any of that stuff either. They're not thinking about the how, how you actually come up with those things, how you're actually gonna write that piece. They might just be thinking about, well, you have a typing speed of whatever amount of words per minute. I mean, I'm aging myself here, but this is how some people think. So it's really important that you give yourself probably even more space than you think you have, and you charge accordingly for that amount of time. You're not charging just for the tiny amount of time it might take you to type something up, you're also charging for the time it takes you to think, to create, to research, to whatever. I'm gonna take these tips on board personally because I keep finding myself in the same position where I am under so much work, my work suffers, and I don't wanna let any of my clients down, and I still want to be producing high quality work, but I find myself really struggling, getting stressed out because I've just put way too much work on my plate and I've constrained myself to bizarre, pointless working hours and feeling like I should be physically typing every single one of those hours. That is crazy. It is an absolute route to write to burnout. When you get right to burnout, you start hating writing. You start thinking that writing isn't for you and maybe you should, I don't know, retrain and become a vet instead or whatever. <laughs> um, writing is intrinsically very difficult, like pretty much any other job, but it doesn't look like any other job. So we can't put it in the box with all those other jobs because it just looks different. Thanks for watching today's video. I hope it might have alleviated some of the stress that you put on yourself as a writer. I mean, just talking about it has really reminded me that I shouldn't constrain myself as much as I do and that I should give myself and my brain 
way more freedom to write and produce my best work. Thanks for watching and I will see you next week. Bye.